Breaking news tonight, fire crews continue to battle a massive fire at a recycling and waste center in Columbia County, the second one at the facility in recent days. Plus, could paid family leave be included in the state's next budget? A new push from Democrats. And we're taking a look back at the life and legacy of legendary artist Tina Turner, who died today. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. We continue to follow breaking news out of Columbia County. Multiple agencies are responding to a fire at a recycling and solid waste center. This is the second major fire at this facility this month. Our Arman Rahman is live at the scene and joins us with the very latest. Arman. Yeah, Eric and Susan, I just finished talking to the Portage Fire Chief just a few minutes ago, and he says that this fire here started with one bale of cardboard. Crews seemed to notice that a bale of cardboard was on fire. They tried to separate it, and then that's how it spread. Uh, about two structures, however, it's one building, are fully engulfed right now. The garbage, the recycling building, and then a storage building. The uh, crews are right now waiting to swap in another strike team. The, cr the chief says that wind is really making this a little bit of a problem here because this fire is completely out in the open after that last one that was 10 days ago, which he says right now they don't have any connection, but the sheriff's office is in if there is. We'll be here on scene with more sound from the chief later on tonight at 6. For now, live in Portage, Armand Rahman, News 3 Now. Armand, thank you. And be the first to know as we learn more about this story by simply downloading our Channel 3000 News app. It is free to download in your app store. To the weather now, let's get a first look at the forecast. Julian Seawright is out on the weather patio. Julian? Well, what a day, uh, what a difference a day will make. We're looking at cooler conditions around all of Southern in Wisconsin for the most part, especially 15 degree difference in terms of temperatures for us here in Madison. But you can see the cool has really taken over the area. As yesterday, we were into the 80s. Today, well, we're looking at 60 degrees as of right now for us here in Madison. Around Dane County, we're seeing those upper 60s, some lower 70s for areas closer to the south. But even around Dane County, you can see areas to the east a bit cooler, but areas to the west are a bit more mild, especially near 80 degrees for our friends over towards Mineral Points. Now, the cooler side is just because of the lake breeze really hitting those areas, especially near Milwaukee, which is at 53 degrees as of right now. Still been a little bit hazy and some cloud cover that we've dealt with throughout much of our afternoon, but looking ahead, it's still going to be a comfortable and cool type of evening for us. Temperatures will be in the 50s early into tonight as cloud cover looks to remain and carry into our early Thursday morning. Now, outside of that, as Armand had mentioned with that fire, well, we are looking at wind speeds coming in from the northeast, so if it's going to continue to spread it will continue to spread at a southwest direction. We are going to expect these breezy conditions throughout the rest of this evening and heading even into tonight. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops later on. But otherwise, we're looking for temperatures starting to fall into the middle 40s for once again tonight. It's going to be a cool one, but tomorrow we're looking for more of the same with temperatures into the upper 60s and some areas even into the lower 70s. We'll take a look at how the rest of this work week will pan out in a few moments. Until then, over to you. Julian, thank you. Democrats in the state capitol have been pushing for it. Paid family leave, which would give time off to new mothers and fathers. It was included in an early draft of the state budget. And political reporter Will Keneally has more on where it currently stands. Will? Susan and Eric, when we talk about paid family leave here, it's tied to the economy. So here in Wisconsin, we're trying to attract and retain workers to the state. Politicians here in the state capitol are just trying to figure out how to do it. And a major selling point, some Democrats say, would be paid family leave. I would probably choose the one that has, you know, more safety nets in place. Business owner Molly Moran said it would be a difficult decision if she had to choose between two different states, one offering paid family leave. It's an issue she experienced firsthand. I had a newborn and I was going to work, you know, shifts that I couldn't actually work. And when I said that to the owner, who was also herself a mother, she said, well, then you just have to make your decision for yourself. Um, and so I ended up having to quit that job. Um, very much could not afford to do that. Democrats wanted to pay for a study to see what the broader impact of instituting paid family leave in Wisconsin might be. What kind of economic benefits would it have? So right now we have a nearly $7 billion surplus. We would take a small portion of that, just $300 million, to help start, actually less than $300 million, to start a program for paid family leave. They floated that proposal during yesterday's budget writing committee meeting, a meeting focused on workforce development here in Wisconsin. Over time, uh, it would be paid for by contributions that employees and employers make, just like, for instance, workers' compensation, unemployment insurance. 
Governor Evers actually included a paid family leave proposal in his budget draft that would apply to state employees. Republicans on the budget committee took that out of the state budget to start from scratch. In these committees, that means that they don't like to see it come up again. I th I'm going to move this uh, motion uh, out of order. So as we heard from Spring Green Senator Howard Markline there, Republicans used a little bit of a process maneuver to block the Democratic study proposal. Now, they did improve some proposals for workforce development in that vote, including local youth apprenticeship and technical education grants. Reporting from the Capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Will, thank you. Police are asking the public for more information about a deadly shooting that happened on Madison's east side over the weekend. 32-year-old Raheem Blue died after being shot at Lush, a lounge on East Washington Avenue Sunday. Police have not provided any information about a possible suspect who remains at large. Anyone with information is asked to call Madison Area Crime Stoppers at 608-266-6014. Those who submit a tip that leads to an arrest could receive a cash reward. Today we learned that DeForest is on track to double the number of drunk driving arrests from last year. Our Catherine Merck joins us live from DeForest tonight after speaking with the police chief about this troubling trend. Catherine? Susan and Eric, DeForest officers arrested 56 people for impaired driving in 2022. As of now, this year, they've arrested 54 people, and we're not even halfway through this year. I want you to take a look at your screen right now. That's some of the data the DeForest Police Department provided us about impaired driving this year. That red line is what Police Chief James Olson is concerned about. With this data leaning up to Memorial Day, he says the department plans to increase enforcement on impaired driving. That's a lot. I mean, it's a lot for anybody, uh, let alone like, you know, somewhere like DeForest. Um, it, it really is indicative of a societal issue. I asked the chief about the key areas that these arrests are happening. Something notable about the data in terms of where these areas of concern actually are. You'll see where many of these OWI arrests are happening tonight at 6 o'clock. Right, Reporting Kat in DeForest, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. Catherine, thank you. And new at 5, striking trustage workers have voted overwhelmingly to extend their strike now through next month. Workers represented by OPEIU Local 39 started the strike last week claiming unfair labor practices after contract negotiations failed with a company formerly known as CUNA Mutual Group. A union representative says workers have been without a contract since the end of March of 2022. More than 90 percent of the 450 workers represented by Local 39 voted to extend that strike. Packers officials and tourism leaders met in Green Bay earlier today to talk about preliminary plans for the 2025 NFL draft. About 250,000 people could visit the area on draft weekend. There have been discussions with Amtrak about adding rail service from Milwaukee and provided the ice on Lake Michigan has melted cruise ships could bring fans to Green Bay. Packers president and CEO Mark Murphy says it's an opportunity for Packer fans to show the world their passion. One of the things we're really excited about, we all know the passion that our fans have and how unique that is. I think that's going to really show <coughs> the whole nation exactly how passionate our fans are. The next step is to create a host committee. The NFL is expected to make its first site visit next month. New at 5, a bipartisan group of legislators are working on a bill that would allow teachers who sexually harass students to lose their licenses. That bill would make school employees, contractors, or volunteers who engage in sexual misconduct against a pupil guilty of a felony punishable by up to three and a half years in prison. Employees would automatically lose their licenses for at least six years if convicted. Under the measure, any police officer or county department that learns of such sexual misconduct would be required to report the violations to the State Department of Public Instruction. Well, keeping track of your personal finances these days goes a lot further than just balancing a checkbook. With cash all but obsolete, the sheer number of transactions hitting your account can really get lost in the shuffle. Tahlil Mohadeen joins us now with a preview of tonight's Call for Action report to get, help get you sorted here. Tahlil? If you've ever found yourself paying for a service you meant to cancel or getting charged a fee that didn't add up, you're not alone. Between swipeless transactions, credit cards, and online subscriptions, it's a lot to maintain. Each company will have their own unique policies and special offers, but what they'll share is access to your bank account. I think it's, uh, it's part of the corporate 
goal is to get people into these hidden charges and uh, only the ones that are being a little more precise on looking through their stuff are actually catching it and so the ones that don't catch it keep paying. The good news is there are money management services that can help you monitor who's taking what from your account, why they're doing it, and provide ways to cut the automatic payments short. Tonight at 6, I'll share what, are, what those apps are and why experts say it's on you to figure it out. Tahlil, thank you. Flags across Texas are flying at half-staff today as the state marks one year since the deadly mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde. Nineteen children and two teachers were killed when a gunman opened fire inside a classroom. The state held a moment of silence at 11.30 this morning in honor of the victims, survivors, families, and the community. Despite an outpouring of support, many of the victims' families still struggle with the unknown. Questions and anger linger about the widely criticized 77-minute police response delay that day. People refuse to accept the facts. They refuse to acknowledge their, their incompetence, basically. And... That information will eventually come out in you know, the litigation through attorneys and stuff like that. And memorial events will continue into the evening hours tonight with local faith leaders and musicians hosting a community-wide service of remembrance at the Uvalde County Arena. A candlelight vigil is also planned for later tonight. Music legend and rock and soul icon Tina Turner has died at the age of 83. Turner rose to stardom from humble beginnings and became one of the most popular female artists of all time. A riveting live performer, Turner had a string of R&B hits in the 60s and 70s with her domineering and violent husband, Ike Turner. After years of physical and emotional abuse, Tina left Ike in the mid-70s with nothing but her name. The queen of rock and roll made a comeback in the 80s with her multi-platinum album, Private Dancer. Tina Turner continued recording and touring into her 80s and was honored by the Kennedy Center in 2005 and inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo act in 2021. Coming up, Julian is back. He'll have our complete forecast. And the House approved a resolution that would block President Biden's student loan forgiveness program. We'll have details next at 5. And the slide continues on Wall Street as the Dow Jones plummets another 256 points. The NASDAQ down 75 at the closing bell, and the S&P 500 falls 30. We'll be right back. The biggest Memorial Day savings are happening for 72 hours only at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Save up to 30% on all Maytag major appliances. Freezers start at $4 a month. Dishwashers start at $17 a month at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley. The Chevy RS family of SUVs has it all. Whether you want the 10.2-inch diagonal color touchscreen on Blazer or extra peace of mind with Chevy Safety Assist, standard on the 2023 Chevy family of SUVs. So take your pick. The choice is yours. Spring into adventure and get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Equinox models. Or get $1,500 cash allowance. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. We're kicking off Bob's Summer of Savings in all my stores coast to coast this Memorial Day weekend. Celebrating over 30 years of furniture fun in my now 165 stores across the United States. So come join the party because I've got new collections you won't want to miss and treats for the whole fam. Plus get Bob's discount on my highly rated furniture, mattresses and more with financing options to fit your budget. Get your home summer ready during Bob's Summer of Savings this Memorial Day weekend. I've saved you a seat at the party and a sofa and a bed and a Storms in your area may have caused damage to your roof. Do you want to trust the roof over your house to unknown out-of-state roofing companies that appear out of nowhere? Who should you trust to fix your roof and do it right? Fry Construction. For nearly 30 years, Fry Construction and Home Improvement has earned the trust of area homeowners. When the roof over your family is damaged, we jump into action. After all, we're your neighbor too. Call Fry Construction and Home Improvement now for your free hail inspection. 
The Memorial Day 72 hour sale is Saturday through Monday with a preview day Friday at Ashley. Get outdoor furniture starting at $4 per month, sofas starting at $6 per month, and so much more with six year special financing store wide only at Ashley. Tonight on News 3 Now, an alarming trend has DeForest Police concerned. OWI arrests are on track to double in the village this year. We find out how police plan to curb this tonight at 6. If you struggle to keep tabs on the service fees you pay, you're not alone. There's just too much to keep track of. News 3 Now answers a call for action with strategies to help make sure you don't get charged more than you owe. Tonight at 6. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Federal student loan borrowers should keep a close eye on Washington. A bill in the House aims to repeal President Biden's student debt relief program, which is also under review by the U.S. Supreme Court. Karen Kaifa is in Washington with the details. Republicans again taking aim at President Joe Biden's plan to forgive billions of dollars of federal student loan debt. The Department of Education has vastly overstepped its authority. No debt has been canceled yet under Biden's proposal to offer forgiveness of up to $20,000 for about 40 million low and middle income borrowers. Nearly 90% of eligible borrowers live in households earning less than $75,000 a year. The plan is also under consideration by the U.S. Supreme Court, who heard two challenges arguing overreach by the Biden administration. Their ruling is expected as soon as next month. But for those who haven't made a federal loan payment during a three-year pandemic pause, Mark Kantrowitz, who has written multiple books on the student financial aid process, says to pay attention and get plans in order. Borrowers may get forgiveness or they may not get forgiveness. Um, they should plan for the restart of repayment regardless. The Biden administration says payments will resume soon, the exact date pending the Supreme Court ruling. And current borrowers could also feel the fallout of a potential U.S. default on its debt if a deal to raise the debt ceiling isn't reached. A default would prevent the federal government from spending money on uh, federal student aid like the Pell Grants and issuing new loans. A prolonged default potentially delaying federal loan disbursement for the fall semester. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. And college grads are starting to hit the job market and Monster.com says 75% of them are worried that the current economy will affect their job prospects. Many are wondering what's next as layoffs and hiring freezes impact some industries. According to LinkedIn, hiring overall is down 29% since last April of 2022, while hiring for entry-level jobs requiring a college degree, well, that's dropped nearly 32%. Well, the labor market is really in transition. We had explosive job growth for sort of the first half of the pandemic era, and things started to turn. And when the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates and growth started to slow down, we saw job growth start to decelerate. And that means even more challenges to navigate, especially with recent layoffs in the tech and finance industries. What this year's class is stumbling upon is that the industries that many of them thought they would be going into, that is not the case. So for instance, many people who thought they'd be going into tech, which has been riddled with layoffs, are actually finding opportunities in retail, travel and tourism. Monster.com says 88% of grads who are job hunting are confident they'll get an offer shortly after graduation, which is an even higher percentage than last year. Well, let's get a look at your first worn forecast. Julian Seawright with the latest. Julian. Well, things are much cooler for today, but it's been rather the same. Dry and calm and quiet throughout much of southern Wisconsin. So as we get into our weather headlines, we are going to be expecting things to be rather the same heading into Thursday. But going into the weekend, we are looking for us to warm back up. We're talking 70s and then eventually even the 80s, which will leak into next week where we potentially could see our first 90 of the season heading into the back end of the next work week. So let's go ahead and get into the forecast of what we're expecting for tonight. Well, here's a bit of some change. We're actually looking for quite cooler or even chillier conditions that will be impacting many areas of the upper Midwest, especially our friends to the far northern parts of Wisconsin. We have frost and even freeze warnings in effect for far further northern areas that are just about north of Rhinelander. But for us, well, we're going to be seeing areas that 
that could be close to not only the uh, freezing point, not for tonight, but we're going to be into the middle 40s throughout much of southern Wisconsin for tonight. And tomorrow, we're going to be repeating temperatures into the 60s. Tomorrow night is our concern of what we're going to see, those really chilly conditions starting to reach areas just north of Baraboo near Camp Douglas and Watoma. We can see temperatures really get close to about to that 32 degree or the freezing point as we get into tomorrow night. And again, we're going to be seeing those temperatures rise right back up as we head into this weekend. So it's a bit of a seesaw action that we're going to be dealing with. And a lot of this comes from these northeasterly winds that are bringing that cooler air off of Lake Michigan. Now it's rather breezy and as it continues throughout the rest of this evening heading into tonight, again, we're going to be seeing those cooler conditions over the next several uh, days or at least the next 24 hours. But as we get into this weekend, we're looking for a bit of that change once again as those winds will start to shift and heading into temperatures that will climb into the 70s. But until then, at least just enjoy the quiet weather that we have and plenty of sunshine as well because any of the cloud cover that we have will start to clear up as we get into our early Thursday morning. But otherwise, we're going to be watching for the potential of temperatures to really start to climb, especially heading into next week. Now we've been kind of hitting uh, a bit of some unseasonable weather over the last several weeks. Now as we get into next week, as you can see the trend so far of this year, we've been hitting some milestones in terms of when we get in 70s, 80s, or even 90 degree temperatures rather early, especially from the 70 to 80 mark. We had them about a couple weeks earlier than what they typically are on average. Now the 90 degree mark is typically near the end of June, but we could be seeing it in the first week of June as we get into next week. So our three things we'll need to know is we are looking at an extended dry period and warm weather heading in right on for our Memorial Day weekend. Though it's going to be great to get out to the splash pad, the pool and even onto the lakes. We are going to be seeing those temperatures climb even more by the time we get into next week. That's right. We're talking upper 80s and potentially even 90 degree temperatures in the middle of next week. So be prepared for some serious heat as we go into the next coming days. Otherwise, taking a quick look at our traffic, we are seeing things a bit slow on the westbound side of the belt line, but otherwise things are rather typical for our 5 p.m. commutes. That will do it for our weather and traffic. Over to you. All right, Julian, thank you. Today, firefighters from around the state hosted an event at Madison College to show the community a day in the life of a firefighter. Participants got to dress in firefighter gear, including a self-contained breathing apparatus, and participate in realistic scenarios and challenges that firefighters face every day. Those scenarios include fire attack, search and rescue missions, and emergency medical services. Coming up next at five, picking the right bicycle helmet for your child. What safety features to look for coming up. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin. No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. Celebrate Memorial Day at Brothers Maine, where unbeatable appliance deals come with expert advice. Enjoy special prices and free delivery on top brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid. Visit us today and feel like family at Brothers Maine. Ruggability. We straight made that word up. How else to describe the otherwise indescribable, rugged, capable, incredible versatility and affordability of a Honda SUV? Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com calls Honda the best value brand. Car and Driver calls Honda the winningest brand in 10 best history. But we like Ruggability. And you'll like the Incredifantabulous deals. So see your Wisconsin Heartland Honda dealer today. Honda gets Wisconsin. Our phones keep us constantly connected. Can you switch to airplane mode? But what if they had a mode to help us actually connect? Introducing what Us Mode, a mode that makes our phones less distracting. 
so we can focus on quality time. So the notifications we get are the ones that matter. So we're never distracted from what's most important. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online to set up us mode for free, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Did you leave the lights on? No. What the? I'll go check it out. I'm not a raccoon whisperer, but I can help you upgrade all this. With free installation on Feltco windows, siding, doors, and roofing, plus no money down and no interest for one year, there's never been a better time to upgrade your home. This offer ends soon. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Feltco. The ultimate Lego fan experience. Don't miss Brick Universe. May 27th and 28th. Meet Lego artists and see incredible works of art. Fun for everyone. Tickets are selling out fast. Visit BrickUniverseUSA.com. BrickUniverseUSA.com. Spring into action and save on stressless seating at the Century House. Now get $400 off all classic power recliners, signature base recliners and ottomans, and cross base recliners and ottomans. And get $400 off most sofas and love seats. Imagine how much you can save building your dream sectional. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Every year in the U.S., more than a quarter million children are injured in bicycle-related accidents. Of course, helmets can help protect against serious brain and head injuries, but they have to fit properly. Mandy Gaither has more on how you can know you have the right helmet for your child. As the weather gets warmer, riding scooters or bikes can help keep kids active. But to keep them safe, helmets need to be worn every time. Wearing a helmet can reduce your risk to injury up to 85%. But it needs to be the right helmet. The CDC says to look for one with labels that have the date of manufacture helpful in case the helmet is recalled. And it should also have a label saying it's certified by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. If you buy a used helmet, make sure it's not broken, scratched, or cracked. They're only built for one crash, so once it gets indented, it's time to get a new one. Pediatrician Richard So with Cleveland Clinic says the helmet also needs to fit properly and shouldn't ride too far back on the child's head. The helmet should be down, and the tip of the helmet should be at least one or two finger breaths above the eyebrows. And it shouldn't rock one inch forward to back or one inch to sideways. So says the chin strap should fit snug with room enough for a finger. And he says parents need to set good examples by wearing their helmets too. No helmet, no bike. I think that's the rule that should be in all houses. I'm Mandy Gaither. And the experts also say helmets should be stored in a place that doesn't get too hot or too cold and isn't in direct sunlight. Also, check with the helmet manufacturer before you let your child decorate them with something like stickers because that may impact the helmet's safety. We'll get a final check of your first worn forecast when we come back. So your credit isn't the greatest? No problem. We offer guaranteed credit approval on vehicles you actually want to drive. Yes, we'll even guarantee your credit is approved. You've been told no before? Join the Bergstrom Automotive family for the yes. Bergstrom, for the yes. Memories matter. I think the biggest thing I got out of my service in Vietnam was a real sense of patriotism. I'm very proud of what I did. I fought for you, and I'd fight for you again. This Memorial Day, we remember, and we never forget those who sacrificed everything for our freedoms. We are Crest Funeral and Cremation Service, and we know that your memories matter. May is Maytag Month in Menards, and we're passing savings on to you with the largest in-stock appliance selection. Find the best prices on Maytag Appliances. Right now, save over $800 on this great Maytag laundry pair after sale price and rebate. Update your bathroom with a Moen faucet that suits your style. Moen faucets give you a lifetime of beauty, reliability, and innovative features. Get this Micah bathroom faucet for $99.99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards.
Do you suffer from chronic or severe back or neck pain? Did you know that there is now a treatment method available right here at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center that offers hope of avoiding spinal surgery for those suffering with bulging, herniated, or degenerative discs? Our therapies help reduce pain related to these conditions and have a high success rate in helping people just like you avoid back or neck surgery. I have experienced low back pain for over 15 years. I had back surgery when I was 26 and had difficulties recovering. The doctors at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center have given me a new lease on life. I am now able to enjoy an active, pain-free lifestyle. Call Midwest Spine and Nerve Center now to schedule a no-obligation consultation to see if our progressive pain-relieving therapies are right for you. It's Steinhoffel's Memorial Day Sale. And right now, save up to $500 on adjustable base sets, plus get $300 in Steinhoffel's cash. Tempur-Pedic Queen mattresses start at just $42 per month when you use Steinhoffel's 72-month financing. Tempur-Pedic mattresses are designed to make aches and pains a thing of the past by relieving pressure points and supporting the body as no other mattress can. Shop in-store or online at steinhoffels.com. At Bergstrom Automotive, we are proud to offer negotiation-free upfront pricing. Upfront pricing means you can put your armor away. There's no battle with scary salespeople here. You've been told no before? Join the Bergstrom Automotive family for the yes. Bergstrom, for the yes. We've got a lot of news coming up. South Carolina has passed a six-week abortion ban. Tonight, our exclusive interview with the five sister senators, three of them Republicans, who band together to try and block the legislation. That and more news tonight on the CBS Evening News. And Julian is back. Final check of the forecast. Well, the three things we'll need to know for the rest of this week and heading into Memorial Day. It's going to be cool again heading into tomorrow, so take advantage of the cool while we have it because we're going to be warming up not just for this weekend, but heading into next week as well. We have an extended dry period, which could cause some concerns for potential fire weather next week, but the 90s are also a potential for us with limited possibilities for us to see any kind of rain heading into next week. Not a right. drop on that forecast. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. CBS Evening News coming away next. We're back in 30 minutes with News 3 now at 6. Stay tuned.